All right, I want to talk about uh, section 11.9, stem and leaf plots. This is kind of a different way to sort data and look at it. Instead of looking at changes over time, we are going to look at frequency. And frequency is how often things happen. And this is a very useful way to look at data as well. And the most basic and simple way that we can do this is by using a stem and leaf plot. So let's take a look at it at a quick example. Let's take a look at some data from uh, science test scores. These aren't real ones, these are just made up ones. But um, I want to look at um, where they were distributed. So I have 97, 92, 77, 82, 96, 75, 68, 80, 79, and 96. And I want to look at how they are distributed amongst the grade spectrum. So the first thing that I want to do, uh, just like normal, is I want to sort them from lowest to highest. And um, let me do that. And I like to do it by crossing things off so I don't get confused. So I have a 68. I have 75, 77, 79, <clears throat> 80, 82, any more 80s? No, I have a 92. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a 96. Another 96. And finally a 97. Now what I can do with this is I can turn it into a stem and leaf plot. And this is kind of what it looks like. I have my stem. And I have my leaf. And I'm going to make a big T chart. And the big thing that we're looking at here is that my stem is going to be my number in the tens column. And my leaf is going to be my ones. So, for example, my 60s, I'm going to put a 6 over here, and I only have 1. So my 60 is going to look like this. My 68. And I can see that because I only have one leaf on the 60 stem, I only have one term in the 60 column. My 7s, I have a 5. I have 7. So let's look at my 70s. I have a 5, a 77, and a 70. Oops, a 79. 79. So it looks like that. So I can see just from the amount of leaves on my tree that I have more 70s than I do 60s. We'll do the same with the 80s. I have an 80 and an 82. 80 and an 82. So I have two terms here. Then I also have my 90s. My 90s I have a 92, 96, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, and a 97. And this is how my stem and pleat leaf plot works. Now I also like to put a key just for people that aren't quite sure what the heck this thing is. So I'm going to write my 6 line 8 equals 68. And this is my key. Looks like this. And it's useful for me to see where a lot of these numbers fall. So I can see just by glancing at the data and my stem and leaf plot that I have a fair bit of 70s, a little, a little bit less 80s, a lot of 90s, and one in my 60s. And this is the point of a stem and leaf plot. And you're going to be building some and then answering some questions. Now from this, I can clearly create my um, mean, median, mode, and my range. And in fact, many of the homework questions will ask you to do just that. Um, if you feel like you understand it, go ahead and go on. I'll build another one with a little bit of more data, just so you can see um, how I'm doing it. <clears throat> okay, let's look at example one. In this case, the data that we'll look at is already sorted for us, which is nice. We're going to have 8, 12, 17, 18, 19, 22, 23, 
31, 35, and 40. All right, I'm going to start with my zero in my tens column. I'm going to move this up. And my eight. Then I'm going to do my numbers with a one in the tens column, a two, a seven, an eight, and a nine. Then I'll do the numbers with a two, a two, a three. That's it. My numbers with a 30, 31, 35, and finally 40. <clears throat> and I'll do my key. 1-2, 3-1, 4-1, 5-1, 6-1, 7-1, 8-1, 9-1, 10-1, 11-1, 12-1, 13-1, 14-1, 15-1, 16-1, 17-1, 18-1, 19-1, 20-1, 21-